On page 155 begins the narrative writing tools. All through our writing lessons for the whole group narrative writing lessons, I've shown you how you can use a little plastic tub with different container parts so that you can store the tools. What could you do also? You could just have a file folder. And then in your file folder, you could have the different cards so that you can pull them out, ready to go. It really doesn't matter, whatever makes more sense to you. Let's now look at each one of the pages so that I can review what they are. On page 156, this is exactly what the title says. It's a helper card to write the actions in a story. This is really for you, the teacher. That one part of all my lessons when it goes, what happened next after a while? These are your steps that you could refer to uh, when you're helping the students write the next action in their story. And it's really, again, just for you. It's a visual for you to see what students need to know in order to sequence to the next action in their stories. So you have what happened next, you have the after or while words, and then here is where you're going to put whatever the previous action was. The next part of this page shows the different emotion faces. That's optional. If kids can't figure out what happened next, then they could pick, to make it interesting, an emotion card. They would decide how they're going to write this. That's where they have the choice of do, say, or think. Do is an action, say and think. That's where you're have, using dialogue or thoughts. And finally, they can go back in their sentence and they can see which part of their sentence is important to describe, which nouns are worthy of being described. They would put an X on that picture, then they would go back and they would figure out which way they are going to describe it, using the five senses, emotions, or the personality of the character, or whoever, whatever they're describing. So sometimes it makes sense just to use five senses, or all three may make sense, and then you choose the one that you think the reader needs to know more, their personality, how they feel, or using a five sense to describe whatever the noun is in the sentence. And it shows you that you always start off with the phrase, what kind of, and then the noun is put there. So what kind of dog would jump into the water? This is a nice little at-a-glance page for you to use for you to understand how kids need to sequence the actions in the story. On page 157 are the do, say, and think cards. So I cut these cards out, I mount them, and many times I put a strip of magnet on the back because if I'm going to show the children these different cards, I like to put them up on my whiteboard right where my planner is so they can see, are we going to do, and then I put it up on the whiteboard. Are we going to say, or are we going to think? And then whichever way we choose to write that next action in the story, I'm going to keep that do, say, or think card there. And then we're going to draw our picture or draw the dialogue or thinking bubble, depending on what it is we're doing in our story. So these are your black line masters to make do, say, think cards. On the next page are the emotion cards. Now this is just a deck of emotion cards. So students who are working in small groups or who are working as partners or independently, they could pick an emotion card from a deck to help them plan the next part of their story if they're stuck. On pages 159 to 162, are all of the large size emotion cards. So you could cut these out, mount them on tag, and then you can have your children in whole group lessons choose a card if you need to make an action or the next action in a story interesting. So this is a nice tool to help your kids come up with better and more interesting stories. On page 163 are the five senses and then a heart. The five senses and a heart are all your choices that you usually are going to go to when describing, adding fancy words, when describing the important nouns in a sentence. When we first show fancy words, we're just showing the eyeball and the heart. That's it. And the reason why is it's simple and quick for children to identify. How am I going to describe this noun? So once we identify the important nouns in a sentence, what do we do next? We use the eyeball and we use the heart for them to decide what category of description words do we want to use. Do we want to use the five senses? So I use the eyeball just to refer to the five senses. Then I can pull out these other cards if we decide to go in the five senses category. Or, and then we can use the heart to 
decide if we want to use an emotion word or if we want to use a personality word. Once the children decide which category to go into, five senses, emotion, or personality, if they choose five senses, then we would decide which one of the five senses are going to be best to describe that noun. If they choose the emotion, then we would write an emotion word, personality, then it's more of the character trait, like grumpy, depressed, happy, silly, a personality trait. So we have our two cards to decide how we're going to describe something. We have more cards there available if you have to go into more detail about what five cents you would want to use. And then we would use our what kind of statement. What kind of, and then whatever the noun is, dog would roll in a mud puddle. Are we going to use a five cents to describe what the dog looks like, smells, tastes, feels, or sounds like? Or are we going to use a motion word? What, how does the dog feel? Or are we going to use a personality word? What kind of dog is he? He's a silly dog. So I think personality is going to be best there. The silly dog rolled in the mud puddle. That's probably the best category to go to. So when we're looking at our five senses, these are the cards I like to show, starting of course with the bottom two, and then if needed, the other senses, in order to determine how to add fancy words or adjectives to our writing. The final page of tools is just when we have our story closing. This is a nice visual that you can show the children. At the end of the story, what did your character think? There's our thinking bubble. Feel, there's our heart. Or wish, and there's our dialogue bubble where they say what they wished. So now you have the different ways that you could say the end of the story. In the end, after that, once, looking back, soon, finally. These are some ways to start that sentence. And then you choose your dialogue bubble, where you would say what you thought, your heart, what did I feel, or your thinking bubble, what did I wish. So wish, think, feel. Those are some ways in order to have that story closing. Those are our tools for our narrative writing section. And I hope that these are helpful more interactive and engaging for students.